catch up to and help to change. So it, it's not, um, everything you said is correct. The parameters are really, um, really can be nasty and uh, really quite narrow. And some people find that just completely deaf to the creative process and some people thrive on solving problems. Yeah. It just depends on the artist. And it sounds like you're thinking about it very appropriately. Thanks. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, I want to turn the question of scale just over to Frank uh, momentarily um, because uh, uh, a few years back we put together a group of artists um, that, uh, in fact, Wes was, uh, Wes Magar in the back there was part of this group, where we basically said we want to do a show called Monumental and have each of the artists do a work that is really categorically outside of the scale boundaries of anything that they've um, uh, done before. And uh, Frank fortunately accepted my challenge. Um, that piece is upstairs. Um, many people have said that it's uh, one of the, the most wonderful works in the gallery. And it's so large that it's really difficult to see where you might sell something like that. Although, you know, my, my um, uh, my years in the business have taught me that there are very specialized places where these things can go and that, that as a dealer I, I'm, I'm apt to try to take that on. But from the artist's perspective, like, you know, I know that this, I remember walking into your studio and you couldn't put the piece upright the way it was going to go in the show in your studio. And I, I've always found that to be such a profound moment of experience for me, and I'm sure for you painting it, it was maybe even more profound. Do you want to talk about that? No, moment? that was interesting, and, I, and it was fun. You know, that was kind of a challenge to, to do something, you know, and of course I, I, I did whatever I wanted, but it was just on a massive scale for, for me. And what I did was I determined how large I could get. In, and I, and I, I live in a old Victorian house, so the, the, and my studio's up in the attic. And uh, it's a pitched roof, so I just determined how high I could get it at the apex of the, of the roof, how, how large I could get the piece. So really working on that piece, I was working on the ladder and everything, and the furthest I could get back was going down the stairs and looking at it. And working on it, I could uh, get about four feet away from it. So it was interesting because when I was finished, it hung, and I hung it up, I was like, when I stepped back, I said, oh, that's what it turned out to be. <laughs> But I just, just, just like Kate said, you know, it's, it's a challenge when you do something like that, and you have to view it as a challenge, and that's, it, and, and that's, that's the fun of it. Um, did, did you learn, like, what did you take away from that? What, did, did it make you say, well, I really wish I could do this more often, or did you step back and say, well, I'm glad I did that, but, you know, um, do I want to make that part of my, um, no, yeah, honestly, if I can work large, that's all I would do, is work okay. large. Um, but it, just, it does become a problem with storage. You know, what do you do with those? And, you know, when, when uh, we're talking about all the excessive pieces we have, the extra pieces, you know, people, I'm sure, are like, well, I'll take one of those. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, do it, it, you know we have to abide by supply and demand. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and also, we don't just want everything out there. You know, like, like Dave was saying, I, I totally understand where he's coming from, where he would rather burn <coughs> all these pieces and get rid of them than, you know, have people that don't appreciate them, have them out there, you know, people owning them that don't appreciate them, or, or have something out there as a part of your legacy that you're not real comfortable with. I, I totally, not that I would do that, but I totally can understand <laughs> where he's coming from. <laughs> I, I would rather eat it than have, you know. And fortunately, I, you know, my wife is, you know, she has the office space where I can put stuff that uh, that doesn't uh, stay, doesn't fit at the house or here. So, you know, that's kind of solves the problem for me. Bruce, anything you'd like to throw in? I think I'm a bigger whore than the rest of them. <laughs> 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 Maybe. Oh, he'll sell it. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, to some extent. Um, you know, but I've gotten interested in you know the new casualists and all that kind of stuff, and I've been stopping paintings before I 
I think they're done, just as a kind of exercise and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the, the end of things is becoming a lot more um, porous for me. So, you know, and it's a joke too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it, I'm coming across as really serious next to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, to me that's the beauty of having a forum is that uh, you really uh, do get to see the different approaches and different sides. And you know, to me that that is uh, that's you know when you can look at the world and say there's thousands upon thousands of artists, each one you know is really distinct, particularly the further along they get in their their field. So I do find that to be fascinating. Well, and I also find, though, that I mean, I'm constantly amazed that, you know, people come into the studio and they like things that, you know, that I don't even care about, and there's some that I really care about that I think are, you know, like, amazing in terms of what I accomplished and what happened, and people are just kind of, mm, I kind of, you know, and, and so... I'm interested both in what other people find interested in it as well, or even more so at this point than some notion that I have of you know, a, a, a finishing place of, okay, now the painting is what it needs to be. And, oh, I would say that too. But anyway, make a joke. <laughs> 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 so uh, we'll shift just a little bit, but uh, this is going to start definitely with Bruce, or maybe it'll uh, end with Bruce too. But uh, Bruce, uh, I, I noticed uh, maybe last week that you had started a blog um, about gestures in Clifford Still's paintings, and um, I did find that to be pretty interesting on a lot of levels. The, the first level, just the fact that you can do that, you know, you can go in and, and start um, making visual comments to the public. There wasn't a whole lot of context to it. Part of my, why I bring it up is that, you know, I'm curious as to what you're after with that and what that means to you. And um, even just the ability to, to, to go in and do that today, it, it, um, it seems very relevant that this artist's work who's, you know, nobody really has seen or very few people have seen for the most part, all of a sudden it's available. So tell me just a little bit about your motivations with that. With well, that. thanks for mentioning it. That is ClifferdStillGestures.com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I do know how to spell Clifford for me. Um, well, I mean, I was taking some clues from a former student of mine, Sterling Crispin, who did a blog called New Media, uh, Greek New Media Shit, um, where he's just started grabbing this things that he found online, um, you know, GIFs and, you know, mashups and, you know, all this kind of stuff that involved uh, either images of actual Greek things or ridiculous decorative pillars, you know, with something going on in it. And it's extremely um, vibrant what goes on. Um, and it's I really, it's really caused me to make this kind of shift. And as I've tried to move into it, you know, what's the logic of it? So I was trying to figure out, well, you know, how do you make a presence? And of course, it has to change. If you ever done a blog, they're enormously time-consuming. Um, but it has to change, and there has to be content, and there has to be a reason for people to go back. And that, and as I was going on around it, and um, you know, I just had a moment where it was like, oh, wow, I live in Denver, Colorado. I can go to the Clifford Still Museum anytime I want, and not many people can do that, and here's something I can do, and, you know, and it's funny, because it's gesture, and it's gentle abstraction, and it's, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I wanted something that was super simple, that wasn't going to require me to, you know, write a lot of analysis or anything like that, so I was like, Okay, well, I'll just take close-up pictures of the, the uh, surfaces of the, his paintings, which, you know, that's my first way of entering into his work was the surfaces. Because, you know, they're sexy, and they're dirty, and they're worked, and there's history in it. And, um, 
So it, there was just some kind of logic to it. And I'm still trying to figure out, it's, I mean, it's only been in existence for like, what, two weeks or something like that. I'm still trying to figure out the, like exactly how to do it. But <coughs> I'm interested in it, you know? So I now have four or five blogs, four. I think it's four. Four blogs or yeah. four, four posts on your blog? No, I have four blogs. <laughs> so I got one called uh, uh, curatorialaccessories.com, uh, versus priceart.com, hopefordstillgestures.com, uh, and the other one's a template blog under my name. Anybody else have yeah. yeah. blogs? <laughs> She's got a question. Can I say something that might be sort of unpopular? Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, I work in New York, and I studied after a couple of in the school, and I'm kind of irked by the feeling that I am feeling all this pressure to love Clifford Still, and <laughs> I just think it's annoying. And um, and I feel like it's citywide, and I feel like everyone's just trying to. You know, yeah, and it's, I don't, why? Why is that necessary? I mean, why do I have to compare him and defend Motherwell against him, or Pollock for that matter? I mean, I'm annoyed. Who wants to answer that? Yeah. I think that's a great question. Yeah, I, 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 he's not my, he wouldn't be my first choice of expression of painters. He's not my first choice. Um, I, it, it has nothing to do with him personally, or the museum, the quality, the architecture, the interaction of that, it's nothing to do with that. He, he just would not be my, yeah, at the top of my list if I yeah. were to you know, point at a paper. Um, of the pieces in the museum that were currently on view, I, I was really um, uh, taken by the reaction that I had physically to the scale of the huge paintings in the one room. I, I felt like that was actually, uh, you know, kind of a Jolt, you know, uh, just not only because of the scale, but because of the repetition and the pattern. And, and and there was one other small painting that I really liked, this yellow and lavender, which is not a very mono, but the still palette, yellow and lavender. Um, the rest of it, meh. I think the I think it's the new museum. You know, I mean, it's it's a new museum. People are excited about that. Yeah. If you're from New York, you know. It's not like we have things like this. I mean, just really <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think, and I and I think seeing them, people are kind of excited about it because we don't get that level of work here typically. And I I I I think it is kind of it's really interesting because you see these pieces over years. You've seen them, but never in person. And to to discover the texture of them, and and, and so there is an excitement. But honestly, in you know in six months, there won't be that excitement. You know, there will be the museum that will generate, you know, people will continue to go see that, but you won't have it forced on you, you know, in six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm not, you know, to me, the jury's still out, but I mean, I've seen that selection of paintings, and I, I'm really interested to see how are you going to sustain, given the restrictions that exist um, in the will. Now, it might be, but it does seem to me this is like a new experiment that nobody's ever done before. And so there, is, to me, the interest is more about that. Mm -hmm. Though I will say, on the fourth trip to see it, I was able to enter into it, and now I have a sense of when I go, okay, what's here? What's here? I feel like I'm just now starting to be able to see it. And I see moments where I'm amazed and you know there's a passage that's you know like I want to go to my studio and mm -hmm. figure out what that is but yeah I mean you know there's the blog you know that's the that's the you know the social reality of art right. but as an artist relating to them it's a very different right. thing yeah and, I, and I'm anointed and, and, and I, I, would, I don't think I'd particularly like him, because, you know, I find the whole thing a little bit kind of, you know, saturated with ego, but, <laughs> okay. Somebody even might have like it's, it's not just yeah. that, it's sort of a period of Denver, that the establishment that put him still up as a god, 
for, for many years, you've got 97% uh, of the paintings are here, but the rest of the paintings, the Met's got a full-on room with, with eight pieces. The Hirschhorn's got a full-on room. SF Moma's got a, a full-on room. These are permanent displays. He's been built up for decades as the, the greatest after expressionist after Koenig or, or Pollock. And um, so, so Denver happens to have inherited it, happens to be up here, but it's not that Denver is, is making this. This oh, is I, just a piece of evolution. I haven't, I haven't um, read that kind of, um, I, I haven't seen that before. So, from other museums or institutions. I mean, I've seen Clifford Still, you know, obviously I've seen them in other museums, but it seems like this grand narrative is, is being sort of shoved down. And, I, you know, I understand it's Denver, and um, there's a certain way that, you know, Denver has to be educated, and I, I understand, I understand that part of it. Um, it just almost, it almost feels um, defensive. And, and to me, that's, that's a little disturbing because you know I want to love um, Denver's art scene, and I'm like, okay, so why do we have to make you know? You'd rather have a Damien Hirst museum, right? No. Well, I, I want to make just a comment about that because to me, I, I do think it's sort of an interesting topic from an artist's point of view, and. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to bring this back to, to Bruce and, and um, certain aspects of his career because, um, you know, Bruce had a certain, I'd say, high profile and high level of um, interest in his work from the community. And Bruce started pushing his work into arenas that I think are maybe more um, down to earth or maybe more meaningful to the artist and I always get uh, a lot of people saying I don't understand what Bruce is doing now and it's not doesn't seem to me to be you know like what what he was doing when everybody loved his work and and I always say well gosh can't you see that you can connect the dots all you have to do is scrutinize and study Bruce's work in depth and so when I think about you know the Clifford Still Museum and that opportunity for a single artist um, in that field, I do think that that's kind of fascinating because it offers that potential. But then when I look at other artists and I say, well, gosh, every artist that's credible deserves that kind of opportunity. So then it does sort of bring it back to maybe this, this ego trip and um, maybe this fact that the museum is his greatest uh, art piece because he was able to get it realized. I, I do think that that topic's pretty fascinating. And what, would, would you guys want a museum in your name with sure. that much work? I mean, <laughs> when you're dead? <laughs> well, I think the danger is, though, is that you, you know, I mean, that came out of a certain, his subjectivity, whatever, came out of a certain notion about self and the self in its relationship to you know the it you know the psychological self you know, like all that and I don't think that personally that that is sustainable today I think there's you know the self has been uh, you know as a site of um, universal truth uh, something um, I don't think it's incredible when you look at, you know, advances in, you know, uh, neurocognition and, you know, um, notions of the self. We have a really different notion of the self, or at least I would argue we need to find a really different notion of the self um, that isn't grounded in, you know, I can have deep feelings and deep, and that has some kind of meaning in the world that the world needs to see or something like that. I think culture is really different now, and I don't think that that's sustainable anymore. That's why it's really, I mean, it's interesting. It's a kind of, at least that's how I enter into it when I'm talking to you now. Um, it is because, you know, it is a kind of social experiment, or it is a kind of art experiment that, still, you know, that is only possible because of this you know, this archaeology of narratives and history 